after today. All right, so for elimination, it's a little bit different. The goal is the same. Okay, we want to solve um, a system of equations and see where it would cross if we were to look at the graph. The first step is different than substitution, okay? We want to leave the equations how they are, okay, sitting one on top of another, okay? The second is we want to get um, variable coefficients that are opposite. So, for example, 2x and negative 2x. If I was to add 2x to negative 2x, what would happen? They would cancel out to zero. That is a goal that we have at the beginning of this process, okay? So let's take a look at number one. Do you see opposites? Yes. 5y and negative 5y. Agreed? Okay. So here's what we do. Once we know that we have opposites, we create a big addition problem. Okay? So draw a line under it, put your addition sign. And then we're just going to add down. Okay? 2x plus 6x is 8x. If I do 5y plus negative 5y, what happens? Cancel. You don't need to write anything. Don't write 0y. It's just going to confuse you. Okay? And then 17 plus negative 9, 8. Okay? Divide out 8, and we get x equals 1. Did people leave their packets here? Okay, I just wonder if you got it okay. Okay. If you don't have one, okay, they're in the alphabet form. All right, once we have one of the variables, so here we have x, how do we get y? Plug it in to one of these original equations. It doesn't matter which one, you can choose. Okay, and then from here, it's just solving and getting y by itself. So 2 times 1, we'd have 2. When you get done, you have an X and a Y for your coordinates. This video is it's a recording a lot So it's not, I forgot where you're from. I usually record it in seventh or eighth period, but I forgot in seventh period. Yeah. So if anybody talks, you're going to get famous. Just get along with the camera. <laughs> All right. Number two. Any questions before I move on? Sorry. Any questions before I move on to number two? Okay. All right, uh, do we have opposites in number two? No. We can easily make it happen, though. Okay, we can easily make this happen. Any ideas on how we can how we can change something? Well, we can't change x and y. Yeah, there's two threes here. It would help if one of them was negative. Agree? Okay, so here's what we do in this case. We take one of the equations and we multiply that whole equation by negative 1. Because if we multiply something by negative 1, what's it going to do to the, to the sign? It's going to flip them. Okay, and that's what we need to happen. So, now, listen very carefully here. When you do this process of changing an equation, you have to rewrite both of them. Okay? Rewrite the top one and rewrite your new one. If you don't, you're going to get very confused. Okay? So that's why I go ahead and say that right now because you will you'll have a mix up somewhere. Okay? So go ahead and rewrite that first equation. It doesn't change. Our second equation, we flip the signs. Now we can create our big addition problem. So after you have those opposites, you can create that addition problem. Okay, 3x minus 3x, or plus a negative, right? Those would cancel. We should end up with 7y. And then negative 9 minus 5 is negative
Okay, divide by seven. for y and plug it into one of the original equations. It doesn't matter which one. You can choose. Okay, then we're going to simplify. Get x on one side. Okay, that, that part is hopefully just simple algebra for you to do this stuff around. Okay, you should get negative one, negative two as your solution. When we talked about substitution, we talked about how you can check these. How can you check these answers? Yep, type both equations of the difference, do it across. It should be your same answer that you get for your solution. Number three, do we have opposites? Okay, can we easily get an opposite? Kind of easily. Um, you have two options. You can change the x's or you can change the y's. There's one that tends to be a little bit easier here. Any ideas on what it is? Y. Because I could multiply negative 5 by what to get 15? Three. Okay, so I'm going to multiply this whole equation by three. Now, you could have changed the x's, but you would have had to multiply both equations by a number. Okay, it's kind of an extra step. So I rewrite my first equation. Make sure every number in that second equation got multiplied. Okay, now you can do your addition. I'm going to let you plug it in and get what? You should end up with negative two. Negative two. We did okay on that? So any questions? Okay, thumbs up if we're feeling okay about this so far. Thumbs to the side if we need a little bit of work. Thumbs down, not so good. No, we're in front of me. Just right in front of me. Right in front of here. Okay. Alright, cool. Alright, let's keep working. Alright, number four. Okay, there's one 
one is a little bit easier than the other to cancel out. Which one do we want to match up here? The Y. So what would you do, Angel? Yep, multiply that top row or that top equation by 2. You already have opposite signs for the Y. Okay, that's something that's really, really nice. When you already have the opposite sign, then you don't have to mess with negatives, which is great. Once you get X, check it up here, and then you can solve for Y by plugging it back in. Okay, number five. Okay, number five. We're getting a little bit more challenging here. Um, when you look at number five, is there one row that we can multiply by a number to create opposites? No. We're going to have to multiply both rows. Okay, so I'm going to talk through this with you um, because on these types of problems, you really have options. So say we want to match up our x's. Okay, say we want to match up our x's. What would we need to multiply that top row by? Three. Bottom row? Four. Okay, now you just told me 3 and 4, but that would get me 12x and 12x. What's wrong about that? Oh, yeah. We need a negative. Does it matter which one's negative? No. Okay, so what I would do Okay, it's, I usually just, I just always pick the first one just because I stay consistent. So I would multiply this one by negative 3 and that one by 4. Okay, but say we wanted to work on the y's instead. Okay, what would I need to multiply the top row by to match up for my y? What about the bottom row? Why not any negatives? They're already opposite signs. So when you go to choose what you want to do on this problem, would you choose Y or X? Y because there are the opposite signs. Is it that big of a deal if you choose X? No. Okay, it doesn't really matter. Um, but just so you know, you have a choice, okay? Whichever one you want to do. I'm going to let you go ahead and work it out. I'm not going to write anything up here. You get to choose what you want to do, okay? If you make mistakes, that's okay. We're learning right now. Okay, you're allowed to make some mistakes. Okay, so get as far as you can. Okay, if you want to type in Desmos and check your answer, that's fine. Okay, but just so you know, when you take the quiz on this stuff, you're going to have to know the whole process. We're going to grade you on the process. You'll have a substitution question and elimination question. You won't because eliminate means you just cross something out. Substitution? Yeah, a lot of a lot of people like if they really do well with elimination, they just don't like substitution. I've always loved substitution more than elimination. I don't know why. 
I think as I teach it, I like eliminate them more. But that's how our brain works. We're all different. negative one. Okay, now if you did if you did the opposite, uh, like if you canceled out uh, x instead of y, your work's going to look different. That's okay. Okay, but you should end up with the same exact answer no matter what you did. Did anybody cancel out the x's at the beginning? Did you get the same answer? Okay, cool. If you did it, let me know. I'll come check your your work. Okay, if you get done with this one, you want to head to number six, absolutely go for it. See if you can figure out what to do on number six if you get done with number five. number five. Do up here? Cancel X or cancel Y? Cancel Y. Okay. So I'll multiply my top row by what? I'm canceling what? Yep. Three and two. Which one do you want me to make negative? The three? Sure. Okay. It doesn't matter if you do the top one negative or the bottom one negative, whichever you want to do. Thank you. 
have to be pretty close to the microphone. Somebody here blah 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 blah. So that you can fill that in and see what's going on. But on number seven, okay, we're on our special cases here. Which one would you like to cancel? X or Y? Y? X? Okay. Let's go ahead and multiply the bottom one by what? Negative two. Some of you have probably already noticed, because it doesn't matter if we chose to cancel X or Y, they're both going to cancel, okay? Cancel here, that's 0X. Cancel here, that's 0Y. Cancel here, that's 0. So really, when it comes down to it, we get 0 equals 0. When we talk about substitution, we have two numbers that equal each other, 14 equals 14. What does that tell us? We have infinite solutions. Okay, what type of graph has infinite solutions? Yes, the ones in the exact same line. Okay, the ones that sit on top of each other. Okay, so you can make a note there. If you were to graph that in Desmos, it would be the same exact line. You can probably guess what's going to happen in number eight. Okay, in number eight, we're going to have something very similar. Okay, let's say I cancel, I'll just shoot for Y's, at this point it doesn't really matter. Okay, on this one, what should happen if it's no solution? Should be impossible, is that what you said? Yeah. What were you saying about? Yes. The two numbers should be different. So you'll notice these two cancel out to zero. This one you get 25. So a zero will never equal 25. That's how we know that that's no solution. Okay. What type of line is a no solution? What type of line is this? Parallel. Right? Because if they never intersect, there's never going to be a solution. Okay, so you can note that for parallel lines. 